Today, we're gonna to be covering integrating Plasmic, which is a no-code visual page and app builder into SvelteKit, a full-stack JavaScript web development framework. It's going to combine the power of a visual page builder, being able to lay out pages using blocks and your mouse clicking back and forth, uh, with the power of a fully functional custom code solution. So you don't have to compromise, you can actually have both in one project. Let's go. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a brand new SvelteKit project. So let's dive into the SvelteKit documentation and go to their creating a project section. As you can see, it has all the commands we need for the command line terminal. So we're going to take this first command and run it in our terminal, which I have over here. So we have over here working directory. We're gonna run that command. We're gonna name the app something else. It's going to be called uh, Plasmic Svelte Kit. And it should take us through all of the different packages we need. So as you can see, it's giving us some options. The CLI for Svelte Kit actually has gotten even better than it was before. We're gonna do a skeleton project. We are gonna use TypeScript and sure, that's enough for us. Then we're going to cd into Plasmic Svelte Kit, and we're going to open up the VS Code editor using the shortcut. Now, with the editor open, uh, we can go in and open up the terminal in here and run a npm install. If we're using npm, you can use not yarn or pmpm. I just figured npm for the general sake that everyone can use it. Everyone has NPM, but you have to kind of install Yarn and NPM PM on top of it. Okay, we've got that done. So then NPM, NPM run dev, just to make sure that everything's working without any sort of integration. I like to run this every single time because sometimes you'll have some dependency that's broken or something, but as we can see here, everything seems to be working as expected. So we don't have to worry there. Next thing we need to do is we need to create something in Plasmic. So I can't, I can't, I'm going to go through a little bit on what Plasmic is so that you have a, a general idea what we're actually going to be integrating. So if we go to Plasmic right now and we'll, we're already there, I'm already in my workspace, I'm already logged in, we can create a new project. In this new project, I'm going to create something that already has like a few pages in it just so I can show a bunch of different examples of what we're going to be doing. Uh, let's do the SaaS website, right? Let's say you're creating a SaaS and you want some of the pages controlled by Plasmic, which is again, a no code visual page builder. And then maybe some of the pages controlled by your SvelteKit app, maybe particularly the SaaS page. So if there's an application that needs to be fully developed custom, that can be part, still part of the same repo as this no code visual page builder that we're using. So we can see here, we already have a bunch of sections laid out. Uh, we have even multiple different pages. So you can see there's an about us page, there's a home page, pricing page, everything with a nav and everything like that. So this is a generic page that's already been built for us, but you can obviously build it from scratch yourself and you can edit anything from scratch yourself as well. So like we can go here and type in a test to see that, you know, when we actually propagate it into our Svelte kit, we'll have that custom text that we put in anything to do with like a git or something like that. You want to put those in an environment file without checking it in. So we can see here that there's some code already generated for us. So we'll take some of that. Um, I'm going to ignore this hydrator for now, because again, this is actually talking about just a straight JavaScript application. We're doing something a little bit different with Svelte kit, uh, where it's not just JavaScript, but it's very close. That's why we can do this so easily, but let's go back to our application. We've stopped our server. We don't need our terminal anymore for a little while. So we can go into our sources. So we can go into our routes and with our page route here, we don't need any of that. What we're going to actually do is to pull in the information, we're gonna use the server route. So that will be plus page plus dot server dot uh, TS. So now for the server, we just need to get the gener generic uh, scaffold. So we're going to go back to our Svelte kit documentation and we're going to go into probably loading data, I would say. And we can take a look at, you see plus page 
.server.js. We have everything we need kind of here. It's a load function that we need to create. So we're going to take that as our scaffold, put that in here. We don't need this post quite yet. And we don't need these params quite yet, or really anything in here for now. What we really do need though, is again, we need to go back to our Plasmic tab, copy this back, go back here and paste that in. So we can see here that now we're generating a fetch request, we're getting a response, and then the result of that response is put right into here. Now, this part will not work for us as it stands. What we need to do is we need to return the result.html into our front end, so into our plus page.svelte file, right? So this is running on the server, plus page.svelte will run on the client. So we need the information that's on the server, the HTML resulting from that page that we just pulled on the client. So to do that, we're going to return a plasmic object and we're gonna return it called result.html. So it's gonna return the HTML back into our front end. So you can see plasmic there. We don't need this anymore. We can delete that. That's all we really need for this server function. So now on our page, we're going to need, we don't need any of this. What we are gonna need is a script tag, with TS. And we'll, we'll tackle a little bit of the TypeScript in a second, but we don't really need too much of it right now. Uh, we're gonna need to export, we're going to export let data. So now we have the data object, which is going to actually contain our plasmic variable that we're passing in, a plasmic property from our server. So that data object is going to be what we're gonna to need to render, or the plasmic part of it, the plasmic property into our HTML. So we're gonna create a div right now that's going to hold all of this for us. And then in here, we're gonna use the at HTML, sorry at HTML to notify SvelteKit that we're rendering HTML. And then we're gonna use the data.plasmic property. So we're getting an error here, and it's a TypeScript error saying that Plasmic does not exist on property uh, object because we haven't defined anything. For now, we're just gonna do something really quickly. Yeah, we'll follow that. It's not really a string, but it can be rendered as a string and uh, with the HTML property, we'll interpret it as HTML. So we'll use that for now. We can correct that a little bit later. Uh, so now we can see that everything kind of looks okay. So we'll save that and pop back up our terminal, clear that and npm run dev again and see what happens. So we're going to open up our browser. And boom, we can see that what we have rendered here in our Plasmic app is now being shown right on the page. And the first time you load it, it can take a little bit of time. And, but right now, after any time you load it again, it is a lot faster. So it's a kind of a one-time load issue. And there are probably going to be ways that you can get around that, especially if you're using static site generation. Uh, but yeah, this is all controlled, as you can see, that test that we added from our Plasmic app. And it is integrated fully into our SvelteKit application. We have it set as our home page right now uh, in the root of our routes folder. But we can do this with any page, right? Because right now what we have, if you take a look, we have home page selected in this string, which means that it's only going to show the home page from Plasmic. But if we change this, it will actually show the other pages as well. And we'll do that in a second. Okay, so let's say you want to show the about page, right? Or whatever other page. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our uh, Plasmic application and we're gonna see what page we want to show and where we want to show it. So let's say about us, right? So about us page is kind of different. We'll open up the code tab again. And you can see here that everything is kind of the same except for this about us. So we're gonna take that about us and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new folder called about us, okay? In that folder, we're gonna copy both of these. 
and paste, right? Sorry. We will just drag that in. We're going to rename it so that don't have any issues there. Enter, rename. Should probably be using the shortcuts, but I'm not. And then in here, we can see that we need to change the home page to, uh, I believe it's about us, or is it with a capital? Let's just quickly double check. Yeah, both capitals. So we're gonna go about us on that. And really, I think that's all you need to change. And now it should. We'll save that there. Make sure that that's looking fine. It should technically already have an about us route. So if we go to our app and we type in about us and we wait, like I said, and the first generation takes a little bit of time, but every other generation after that, we can see that it automatically generates the about us page for us. So now the only problem is, uh, well, actually, because we already have this uh, functionality wired up inside of our Plasmic app, uh, the uh, navigation that functionality, it even navigates for us. Obviously, if we go to any other page that we haven't created in SvelteKit, it's going to give us a 404 not found, but we can easily add those pages in as we need them. And if we wanted to, we can even add a features page that isn't controlled by Plasmic. Let's say you want to have a completely custom features page that you don't want a no code editor. You can do that. You can also just bring in certain components that you want right into that features page or the pricing page, or maybe you want a modal that's controlled by Plasmic, but everything else is controlled by SvelteKit. You have the flexibility to do that as you're building. Let's just quickly take a look at how quickly we can actually see the changes that we make in our visual page builder appear in our SvelteKit application. So again, we'll go to something like value propositions headline and put a, a, a test, right? And that's done, right? That's it. We didn't click save or anything. If we go back to our application, we don't see it here. But if we refresh and give it a second, every time that it uh, is updated on the homepage side, it invalidates the Plasma cache and has to reinitiate this page. So that's why it takes a little bit of time. Again, the first hit takes some time. The subsequent hits are already cached on the server, on Plasma server, and it will be fast after that. So that's why it's kind of an interesting system. But you can see here, automatically, we have a test already added. And even if you were to like, you know, a control shift R, uh, the, re the refresh, it's still going to load quickly on a second reload, because it's, it hasn't been changed yet. It hasn't been hit again, it hasn't been changed. And it's been already been hit. So the cache is already ready for you to go. And that's really it. To get the basic functionality up and running takes no time at all, as you can see during this uh, video. Uh, there are some other features that we can do. Something that we haven't tackled yet is hydration. We haven't needed it in this particular case because there's not much functionality to this website. But if you do need hydration, uh, you can take a look at this REST API. There is a way to add this loader hydrate function that Plasmic provides. And then just make sure that it is loaded properly on your pages and you're good to go there. Uh, if you need something like that and you're having troubles, please feel free to reach out to me. I'll create another video, no problem, with the Plasmic Hydrator function. Uh, but for the most part, this should get you started on creating a hybrid application, both with no code and code, and the ability to integrate them together to allow your team to be able to, for instance, create a landing page without any intervention from you other than creating a route for them on your SvelteKit application. This obviously doesn't only work with SvelteKit. If you were paying attention before, if I click on code, there's actually all these other frameworks that it supports natively. So if you're already a Next user or a Remix user or a Nuxt user, uh, you don't have to go through some of these steps. It's actually a, a little bit simpler. Uh, there's packages that you can load right into with NPM and it can automatically create routes for you even. So there's a lot of extra functionality as on top, but I'm kind of, I, well, first of all, I love Svelte. And I also love the fact that I can control exactly which route is a plasmic route and is actually which route is not a plasmic route really easily and simply in my mind. You can still do that with any of these integrations. It's just done through kind of configuration part of, uh, of things, which again, it's easy, but it's uh, a little bit different than how we covered it.